spend a little time talking about a modulating device that Johann Sebastian Bach uses in his cello suite number one prelude, the famous one in G major. We've moved it up here for purposes of demonstration. It's going to be in G7 to C7 to F major to F7 to B flat 7 to E flat to E flat 7. We might just go that far because you'll get the idea. These shapes can be used effectively on other string sets as well. So this initial shape of B, F, and G works equally well here on the 5th, 4th, and 3rd strings. So all the shapes we have will be We could get into it on the thirds, fourth, third, and second strings as well. We shall see. If you've not yet done so, I would definitely appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel, like, share, and leave a comment if you're enjoying the content. And if you'd like to leave me a tip, that would be very pleasant. And my PayPal information is there in the description below. So now let's get on with some modulating devices from Johann Sebastian Bach's Cello Suite Number 1. We're going to start here at the 7th fret of the 6th string, B. Now this is a 1st inversion dominant chord, 1st inversion G7. You can hear the root implied here. Oh, It's going to rise up to C. That's the leading tone of C in the G7 chord. We'll rise up to C. We want these things to make sense to our ear. So this is 7, 8, and 10 on the 6th and 5th strings. B, F, and G. Now we're going to have C7 in this little configuration. If you know your B7 chord down here, the bottom three notes are the root, third, and flat 7. And we have those here as well. So up at C. This is 8, 7, and 8 with the neighbor tone below. You could think of this as the root, the 3rd, and the 7th with the 6th below. I just think of it as the scale neighbor below. Uh, we don't need to get overly concerned about the non-chord tones. They're passing. They could equally be above to whatever degree you want. We're looking to use this as material to improvise. So from G7 over B, C7 with C in the bass, 8, 7, 8, 7, 8, and now F major. Looks just like your E chord shape. But here at 8, 8, 7, C, F, and A, it's a second inversion F major chord. Second inversion means that the fifth is in the bass. It's a very grounded and regal kind of sound to my ear. First inversion. Second inversion. So we're going to play... Box motif here, eight, eight, seven. So C, F, A, G, A. C, F, A, G, A. F, A, F. 
this feeling of jockeying between second and first finger and little finger and first finger. Now when you find something like this, if it Instantly want to improvise with that feeling. So we're going to do the same exact thing down a whole step. We were here. Now if we put the bass, we're at the 8th fret. C, if we put the A in the bass, pardon me, 5th fret. So we have to picture if this is the 5th of F, the 3rd is a minor third down and then we're going to use flat seven and root there. I won't go over these fingerings because they're the same. So here we are in A flat seven. flat major or C sharp major to this would end up going to a B major so a little modulating device we can look at it here on the fourth third and second strings the same idea See now the key of uh, the key of F or key of C sounds so far away from where we just ended up. So B, F, and G same because we're not using the second string. It's the same exact shape. Nine and ten with twelve above. Now before we had our little B7 style shape, but here we're going to have to take the B7 shape and raise the second string. So 10, 9, 11, C, E, and B flat with an A underneath. Here's a little, our little F triad, 10, 10, 10 with the G on the third string, 12th fret, if you'd like. So all the same ideas apply, we could bring it down. things really pay off is you start to expand your idea of related keys, related positions, and your ear will start to gravitate towards these kinds of modulations. I do hope this finds you enjoying your music and finding new things that are interesting. If you have watched this far, I do appreciate your kind attention. And as always, I wish you a very good day. <laughs>